This is where it happened. Here on the northern shore of the Sea of Galilee. Here is where Jesus and his disciples lived and worked and were in ministry for about three years. It's from here that Jesus and his disciples changed the world and all of history. And as his followers still today, we give thanks for all that took place on this shore here on this lake. Not some other place, but right here. And as you look across on your left to see Magdala and towards your right to see Capernaum on this northern shore, this is where it happened. You know that Jesus spent a lot of time with his disciples and some of that was right here on the water. Not some other lake, not some other place, but right here. As you look on the water, this is the water where he sailed, this is the water where he walked, <laughs> this is the water where Peter tried to walk, right here. And this, this is the place. Matthew chapter 14, starting with the 22nd verse is a story that many of us will be familiar with. But sitting right here where it happened, you may li be listening to it this morning in a brand new way. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. When the evening came, he was there alone. But the boat was already a considerable distance from land buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. Not some other lake, but right here. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come he said. And Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink and cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You have little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. And then those who were in the, wor were in the boat worshipped him saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you're the Son of God. When they crossed over, they landed at Gennesaret. And when the men of that place recognized Jesus, they sent word to all the surrounding country. People brought all their sick to him and begged him to let the sick just touch the edge of his cloak. And all who touched him were healed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Matthew records that in the boat that night, a boat a little bit different from this one, the weather was a little different than it is today too, but still not so very different from what we're doing this, this morning, was the first time Matthew records that the disciples worshipped Jesus. Isn't that interesting? We're already halfway through the account. Halfway through the book, chapter 14, the disciples had already seen him heal a person of seizures. They'd already seen him heal the paralyzed man. They'd seen him cast out demons from someone who was oppressed. They'd seen him cure leprosy, which was a particularly difficult disease in his day that carried not only awful physical consequences, but a horrible social stigma. They'd seen him heal a Roman servant, uh, Roman officer's servant, Jesus sort of crossing the boundaries, again societal boundaries. He had healed the paralytic whose friends had let him down through the roof. By the way, that took place right there. Not some other place, but right there where you can see this morning. He had raised a little girl from the dead. Remember that? That took place right there. But this is the first time the disciples worshipped him. Why do you suppose that was? Maybe it's because this time they were the ones in the boat. This was the time they were the ones that needed his touch. They'd witnessed lots of miracles, but this time the miracle was for them. And there in that boat, 
they worshiped him. Friends, this morning, we're in the boat. You're in the boat. You've witnessed Jesus do a lot of things in other folks' lives and your church and across the history of your life and your family and for others. And this time, you're the one in the boat. Right here where the disciples were 2,000 years ago. And so this morning, we have the opportunity to worship Him because we're the ones in the boat. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this powerful moment that you have provided for us. We thank you, O oh God, for Jesus, who ministered and lived long ago on these shores and right here on the surface of this lake. Lord, thank you for all that he has come to mean for us. We're grateful that he would eventually leave these shores and go to Jerusalem and give his life on a cross and rise again. That's why we're here today, Lord. We thank you for all you've done. We thank you for what you did for those folks 2,000 years ago. We're thankful for all that you've done for people in our families and in our churches. All that you did for Peter and for Mary Magdalene. But God, this morning, we want to say a special thank you for what you've done for us. We, too, are in the boat with your disciples. Thank you, Lord. Amen.